need some need some help in uh, moving this thing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, here we go. Hmm. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to go, and Jeffrey Renard Allen is here, and as the panelists come in, they're in transit, they can join us. Brother Jeffrey? Brother Jeffrey? Okay. Hello, thank you all. Can you all hear me? Can you hear me? Um, so we're still looking for a couple of our panelists who are about somewhere. So the, uh, the essentially the idea of this panel is to, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, to talk a little bit about internationalism and the black writer and how, um, and how geography and such questions as that are affecting what's happening with um, black writers worldwide today here in America, in Africa, in Latin America, and in other places as well. So what I actually, what I thought I would do is to pose a question to each panelist and let you speak for a few minutes, and then um, after we've had a statement by each panelist, we can talk a little more generally before we open it up for questions from the audience. So I think with that in mind, I'll probably just start uh, Emily, since you're closest to me, <laughs> I'll start with you. Um, some of you may know the writer Emily Rabito, who is who was a novelist, who's published one novel, and also has a work of creative nonfiction, which is called Searching for Zion. And the way I would describe the book is it's essentially about kind of um, eclectic black religious movements. Um, such as Rastafarianism and uh, the black Israelites and so on. And your book is kind of an investigative journey into those religious ideas as a way of also trying to find your own identity. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, among other things, you come from a biracial background. Mm -hmm. And uh, your father is a very prominent um, scholar of African-American religion and, uh, you know, and slavery and the relationship between those two things. And um, in any case, so I guess my question, my, I'll start with you in terms of this uh, idea of bi biracialism and what that means to you as a writer and what, what, and maybe more generally, what do you think that means in terms of what's happening with African American writers in particular today uh, since this idea of biraciality seems to have become a kind of a, its own separate genre. I don't know how much um, it's a separate genre. Maybe having a, a biracial president makes, makes being uh, of mixed race sort of more, more pronounced in a sense, even as a writer. But really, so many of the writers we know as black writers um, it's no new thing, right? Are are actually biracial, um, so so I don't think of it as being a you know a, a new trend necessarily. But I think there are a lot of writers who who uh, in in recent years have been maybe mining the ways that it's a unique um, experience uh, under the umbrella of of being black. Um, Danzi Senna. Matthew Johnson, um, myself, and many others, I think have been interested in, in biracialism as a trend. And uh, this book that I wrote uh, most recently, Searching for Zion, as, as you mentioned, I am the daughter of a, of a scholar of African American religion. And I was very interested in how um, he had written a lot in his scholarship about the importance of the book of Exodus in the lives of, of black people in the Americas as a source of inspiration in terms of finding a, a home, in terms of being a metaphor for freedom, and um, particularly for, for blacks in the Americas who continue to feel dispossessed or disenfranchised, disinherited, uh, and an uneasy relationship with their citizen 
citizenship and, and not exactly at home um, in this country, that there was a, a drive to, to look elsewhere, um, to imagine where the promised land might be since this didn't seem to be it. And, and uh, you know, that, that sense of kinship with the Hebrew slaves of, of the Bible in bondage under Pharaoh who, who journeyed in the, in, the, in the Exodus to the promised land and, and found a place is something that, that has moved black people since the time of slavery not only to, to enter the Christian religion, but also um, politically, uh, you know, as well as spiritually. So, you know, I, I grew up thinking about the promised land um, and Zion not so much as what is typically talked about. Zionism is known as the, the you know, the home of the Jewish people, but, but for me, being the daughter of this man who, who studied um, African, African American religion in this way, I thought of it more as a place that held meaning um, for, for black people. And I knew that also through music, right? Um, that Zion is a, is a term we hear again and again in, in reggae, um, as well as in Negro spirituals. And so, and it's also something we hear in political speeches, and in, in even when Obama was campaigning, um, he, he posed himself as Joshua standing on the shoulders of Moses, um, which was an intelligent way to, to make a nod to the civil rights movement. And, and um, Martin Luther King, who'd, who'd positioned himself and been positioned as, as Moses, who we have to remember never made it into the promised land. Um, so anyway, I, I, I undertook this book of investigative journalism in part as a person who felt, uh, as a biracial person, not exactly at home in this country since I was constantly asked as a child and growing up, you know, what are you, where are you from? Um, and, and there never seemed to be an easy way to answer that question. So I gravitated towards people who, uh, for this book, who actually, you know, also felt like they weren't exactly at home here, but had the cojones to, to pick up their roots and look for home. And my question for them was, um, did you find what you were looking for? And I went to, Israel and interviewed African Hebrew Israelites, and I went to um, Ghana and interviewed African Americans, and I went to Jamaica to learn more about the Rastafari faith before I went to Ethiopia to interview Rastafari from, from the Caribbean who had emigrated there in hopes of finding the promised land. And that was this shape and journey of, of the book. But, uh, but, but my own being, my own being, uh, biracial and feeling slightly outside of, of home, outside of race, but deeply interested and invested in it also, um, was, a, was a pathway into the story. Okay. Thank you for your answer. Uh, Gillian, I'll maybe go with you next. <laughs> um, and on the biracial question? Or the um, <laughs> sure, why not? Okay, yeah, okay, we'll open it up. Um, maybe you are... You know, how do you think this, maybe, maybe I'll phrase this somewhat differently, okay. how is this question of biraciality redefining what we think of as the black writer? And I think Emily addressed that in many ways as well. Okay. Um, I am biracial, in case you were wondering. Uh, my mother was um, Jewish, um, Latino um, background, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, and um, my father was a uh, mulatto, black Jamaican. So that, it never occurred to me that I was biracial until I came to the United States to college and then I had to call home and say, Mom, what am I? You know, I have to fill out this form that says race. And she said, well, read out the the possibilities, and I read them out, and she said, check other. So, you know, somehow I've always remained other in my own head. But in the Caribbean, being biracial is being Caribbean. That, um, that was not something that anybody remarked on. You know, it just was. So it wasn't until, as a Caribbean person coming to the United States, that I then had to self-identify.